Hey, hello, hey, get me out of here. I'm running late. I'm supposed to be in Toontown. It's opening today. I'm innocent, I tell ya. And now we've made it. We were here earlier for, for when uh, Mickey's Railway opened up. But now we get to check out the rest of the town. All the ambiance, the sounds, the music. Totally different since we were here. A little bit of a line there. I wonder what that one's for. I heard there was a huge line for the picnic baskets. I'm not going to wait for one of those. Those are pretty cool, but no thank you. But look at this. The green hills of the backdrop. The tree will be looking at everything and anything here. But look at the beautiful, the energy, the colors, the vibrancy of it all. It's been too long, too long. Let us just start over here to the right hand side. This part was already open when they uh, reopened, when they opened uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. And all the gags and props and everything here, we were able to do. But of course, Roger's cartoon spin was closed during that time. Nice, relatively large park. As you can see, it's gonna be great for people to have picnics. I just wish the stroller park, and this, it bothers me. It's like, you know, just get rid of the strollers or don't put them on the grass. I mean, I guess in a way it's still better than when they used to, you know, be right in this area, but I would prefer the strollers were gone or move somewhere else. But look, they're having a great picnic right there. And it looks like Rogers is probably down because the time is off. But it's good to see Benny moving again. That one's probably my favorite gag of all when the fireworks factory explodes and the smoke comes out. Centennial Fountain. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. I love the uh, dirty dancing pose that they do there. And what's kind of cool, I don't know if it was intent or not, but the pathway around it does get wet. I don't know if it's meant for a cooling effect or just some water overflow. I'm sure people are just playing around with it, but it does look like they closed off the fountain for access right now. My guess is it's probably because of the ridiculous sign right there. They don't want people wrapping around the fountain for safety, so they close it off to for traffic flow. Here with the grand old tree, this is supposed to be the real centerpiece of the place. As you can see, there's the little lanterns up there, and they're all in the same colors of our favorite characters. I mean, I see right there, there's Pluto. I see Goofy's colors, Daisy's colors, Mickey's colors over there. Yeah, there's Goofy right over there. Now, it's interesting, it is a real tree, I don't know what type of tree it is, but I did hear it's the same type of tree that was like in front of Pirates of the Caribbean. And then they got some fake roots popping out for you to sit down, climb over, climb under. But what's really nifty about them is that they all have little, little braille spots with the word underneath them. So I guess this is braille for dream. I saw play earlier somewhere. Yeah, there's play right there. Goofy's gas station got changed to the Good Boy Grocer's Market. This is where you can pick up the picnic baskets, the slushies, some other snacks and beverages. And speaking of the main, the top dog in the park, there he is, there's Pluto. Good old boy there. How you doing, Pluto? Good, good, can I give you a scratch? That's a good boy right there, that's a good boy. Got the spot. Love it. Exactly. This house has lots of childhood memories for me because I remember when I was very little. Wait, hold on. We're gonna take a break here. There he is. There is the main man right there. So Goofy's How to Play Yard and Donald Duck's Pond. So that I remember back in the day when this used to be an actual like bounce house inside. And then they took that away after a few years of all the injuries, etc. But now they got this cool little play yard. And then this bridge, so you walk around, wobbly bridge going on, 
and it makes noise like a rickety old bridge as you walk across it. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like that. And then we got little hopscotch with the numbers. A beautiful, colorful birdhouse right there. I like this. I love the use of colors, even if it's just chalk art. Oh, and then brought back Goofy Scarecrow. It's his uh, scare canteen. And not doing too good of a job there. And I don't remember if it ever had lanterns on it, but it's still very beautiful. I like the, whether they're old or new, I don't know, but the colors are very nice. And there's a big old honeycomb or a beehive trapped in there. And I don't know if that's good for Goofy or not. He may need to get an exterminator for that. And this is well, one thing that uh, in yesterday's uh, speech that Ken Podrock was talking about when it comes to kids of all ages and abilities, they opened up this play area to a little bit be a little bit more accessible for those with uh, different ability needs. You got the cool little slides. You got Robbie, the two right Robbie. there. Oh, a curvy one going on. And they all have a little platform that you fall underneath. Adults can even go on it too, so that's cool to know. And you got a nice little view platform. You can also climb the netting. A little bit of a jungle gym effect here, but the slides are the main attraction. I didn't realize. Bell peppers. I love it. So I guess this way to Bigfoot Lookout, and then I guess it's a Bigfoot trap, because Bigfoot stand there for free food. But let us go up the uh, accessible ramp that they added so the kids can even go down, check out the observation part, and slide down if they so want to. We'll stand over here on this corner. Beautiful view of, of all of Toontown. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this is probably going to be your best view of Toontown now because since they closed Donald's boat forever, you can't go up on the top deck no more. So this is probably going to be your best aerial view of all of Toontown. Up oh, there's Pluto right there. We saw him a little bit ago. Now, I did notice that they've been taking cues from how uh, Galaxy's Edge is where the characters don't really have specific meet and greets no more. It's really just gonna be a case of find them when they're walking around, take a quick photo, autograph, picture with them, interact. I've seen videos of Goofy up here playing with the kids and you know uh, pushing him down the slide and having a good old time. But yeah, those, uh, those meet and greet style days, those are gone. But big footprints going up the hill. Ah, that is a good one. That is a good thought for Disney if they're watching. They should put some Bigfoot footprints going somewhere right here in the back forest area. Maybe even have like a little cut out of Bigfoot. That'd be kind of cool. I like that idea. I hurt my butt. That was fun. Exciting and thrilling and scary. Get a little bit of a bum massage there too. Got the little bread rollers. Needing the dough back there if you know what I mean. Well, let's go observe Goofy's house. Candy makers are wanted. I like candy. So Goofy has redecorated. Oh, I love the frame. Look at that. But look at that. This reminds me of the Step Brothers photo from the film. That's what it reminds me more than anything else. But And then here we go. Now, I am going to say this. Disney, we have a problem. Okay, let me know in the comments if you know. Pause the video. Figure out what's wrong with this photo. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what I'm upset about this photo. You would think nothing big about it, but what color hair does Max have? Well, how does he look? When Max first appeared in the old cartoons, he had red hair. So now they completely changed the whole canon of Max. So which one is it? Are we gonna go, is this now the new official version of Max going forward? I mean, it makes more sense because people know him as, you know, Max like that. But I'm assuming that is Grandma Goof right there. Teaching Max how to bake. Grandma's cookies, I'm assuming. Honey cookies or honey candy or something. 
as most families do, a little bit of a growth chart there. You can see max age two and a half, four, six, now. And then my dad keeps going and going and going. Apparently Goofy's not that good of a fisherman. Look at all the kinetic energy going on in here with these little pipes and machines and candy things. I like the photos that they have here. Max and Daisy. You got Max's power line. And you got PJ and PJ's sister. Ah, oh, there he is as part of the scouts. There's PJ and the Pete and the family going on a nice camping trip. As you can see, there are pipes and tubes with a bunch of balls hanging through there. And then the balls fall through the hole right there, land on the different dishes and bases and balls and bowls. And then you can move these to try to drop them into their particular, there's a one for Donald, Daisy, Pluto, Mickey and Minnie. And you can see the boxes coordinate with them. So you're trying to give them candy. And this ball just keeps going and going and going. You turn the wheel to push a set of balls up and up and up and up and up until they get over here. So we spin the spin that to push all the candy balls up onto the record player, which sorts the balls out, puts them into the tube right there, and then we shoot them out here through the barrel. You can see all the different flavors. They go up the tube, through their network of tubes, and then down into the candy assorter. And you got a little blender popper here. So you're trying to put the balls into that tube to make them go somewhere else. I see some candy being thrown in the tube. So they'll be down here in a second. There they go. So you gotta cook the candy. And you can set the temperature right there. Oh, look at that. Done. And the candies get returned. Goofy, I guess, is a beekeeper. I like it. Oh, look at the cute little chalk art. That's right in front of Goofy's house. Look at that. Oh, it's a big old train. Look at that. And look at that, he's Bigfoot. So then over at Donald's play area. Oh, that's a cute little detail. It looks like Goofy and Max were doing their little footprint dance or something like a, kind of like a really weird game of hopscotch. But it's cute. Maybe it is, maybe they're, maybe this is the, the dance moves you gotta learn for the perfect cast. So they got, the little seesaws, little springy seesaws like that. And there is supposed to be a little bit of a water pad or something. There's a water feature right there. So that is an area where people will be able to cool off during the hot summer months. It is not currently active right now. But it's cool, he's got these little spinny seats right there. And you better think I'm gonna go on one of these. Fun, this, this is fun. Woo! Woo! The SS Daisy. So like I said, they removed the capability for you to go up to the second deck and the inside of the actual boat itself. But what's cool is that they have these interactive, like they remind me of the Main Street windows. So let's see what we got here. So it looks like it's gas. Well, technically it is gas that they get to, it's not oxygen, so I guess we're pumping more gas. I forget which one is this one. Is this Huey, Louie, or Dewey? I forget, I think this is Louie. So I guess I'm pumping air. There we go. So I'm pumping the air to get it going. And there's some uh, Scroo Uncle Scrooge's coins. So I'm pretty sure this one's Huey. So we're going to pump some air into these scuba tanks. There we go. I like the added crustaceans and anemones and all that on the keel of the ship. The rudder. Yes, it says Miss Daisy. And they got a cool little tent where you can play around in, climb over, climb under. Little seats, tell ghostly campfire stories here. And a little bit of a seating area. Some boxes, some benches for the adults to sit, let the kid, play, kids play around. And some more of the porthole windows. This one we got the bilge pump. 
That is not what a bilge pump is for, but that's okay. And that's Webby, right? Yeah, that's Webby, the girl. More with this and all that's cool. You get to spin the sea stars and the lights with a little spinner like that. A door on the outside of a boat does not do well, I think. Taking a closer look of the splash pad over here at Donald's. So I couldn't tell you exactly what is going to all end up happening, but obviously you got the little, the little sparkly water sprinklers that pop up right there. My guess is it's one of those kind of like a synchronized show where these ones go up, those ones go down, and vice versa, and just kids can just walk around and get wet. So it's not open at the moment. They, they roped it off, but hey. Well, we'll definitely be back here a few more times, so we'll check it out when it finally gets open. Uh-oh. Is that, is that news in Toontown right there? Very good. <gasps> so I guess this is a vlogger uh, influencer row here. But really what we're all waiting for is the gates just to the right of those blue gates right there that is the cast member entrance. And I guess the newest member of Toontown resident Pete is going to be making his appearance here very shortly for today. So that's what the rumor is. That's why everybody is standing around trying to gather a glimpse of him. And so will we. Donald. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, wait. Well, we finally met him. He, so, he, like I say, he comes out through the gates that are kind of in the back area over there. No specific time when he comes out. We were just happy to be lucky there. Ran to Timothy AF. Great guy on Instagram. I'm going to put his Instagram down here below. Make sure you subscribe to him. But uh, it was just a random time. And, you know, the, he was so popular that he just did laps around the park because there was no time for stopping. But still, we got to see him. It was pretty cool. And, that was, you know, he's a cool character. I like that. So I'm hoping for newer characters, different characters. You know what would be really nice to see? My guess would be is Max would be the next one. I mean, look at all the Max references that they put into Goof's house. It just is a natural fit for Max to become a more permanent member here of Toontown. And if he was Powerline version too, that'd be even better. So then speaking of the park that would, you know, Pete was walking around, it's nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really do miss the fountain. But this is an example of where removing the fountain and adding this picnic area was the right choice. I like this. This I agree with and I like it. Like I, I could use a few more benches, but this is going to be great. I mean, I mean, the whole point about it is the picnic theme that you get from the ride, you know, from the railway ride. So I get it. And I, I mean, look at all the picnic blankets I've seen right here. We'll have to do this one time in the future. And we got Minnie's house where we can meet and greet with her later. Wait time's about 45 minutes, give or take. Inside, I heard the house itself is just the same, just a repaint. Uh, the line is pretty hefty at the moment for sure. But you can see the, the queen mouse right over there in the back. That's where you meet her for a spot of tea. Oh, and Mickey's house right over here. Wait time is 60 minutes currently. We'll go through it a little bit later. Meet Mickey. And yes, I did hear that there is nothing really changed about that one. All the interactions, all the props are the same. It's just a case of everything just got repainted and touched up. And here is Mickey's car up here for a great photo spot. And the line for the popcorn. And of course, popcorn, delicious popcorn. But the main thing is, it is the popcorn bucket. That one is really cool. Because it's like an old Cap El Capitoon theater, like an old school popcorn box with a bucket. That's really nice. Mm, fresh pop popcorn. Love that smell. Love that smell. And the new bucket. So the souvenir, the yummy popcorn bucket goes for $23. So here is the graveyard. AKA where the old Chippendale house used to be. I'm very sad. Very sad about this. Oh, I understand. I mean, it wasn't easy to go through. I was getting stuck in there a couple times myself with my big old booty. But still, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the picnic, you know, vibe about it. 
but I also feel like they could have just redone the chip house, you know, like, I feel like there needs to be something in this area, but I might be the only one that says that. I mean, I will admit, it's pretty soft on the feet. So it'd be nice to, you know, take a break here. Ooh, on a hot day here underneath the shade. Yeah, this would be a nice spot to take a minute to cool off. Oh, look at this. All dogs must be kept on a leash. How cute. The new Chippendale Gadget Coaster. Now, it used to be Gadget's Go Coaster, as in Gadget from Chippendale Rescue Rangers. It still has that vibe to it, uh, but they kind of just did more of a homage to the name because they changed it to the Gadget Coaster, not Gadget's Go Coaster. But you see, you got Chip and Dale right there. It looks like Chip is, uh, he, I guess, the water effect he'd be spitting from his straw into the teacup where Dale's holding. You still got the frog. I see the, you know, everything about the ride itself is the same. The cue, the line, the props. I mean, they even got the little, the hand crank over there that's supposed to be lifting the, the cars up the rail. But I know they're supposed to be in homage to Gadget. There's a statue of her somewhere in here. So we gotta look for that. We'll go through the ride as up oh, there. I see it already. It's towards the back near where the hand crank is over in this area region right there. I'll try to zoom in right now so you can see. But again, we're gonna ride the ride a little bit later. A few moments later. As you can see, there wasn't a whole lot change. You do have the, uh, you know, the, the second loop or second helix, I guess, for lack of a better word, spin. Uh, you got, like I said, chip and nail, and then you did have gadget, and that was the best part. Is gadget was right there, and then she just said, you know, hey, I put this into extra super fun mode or whatever case is. So it's good to see that she's back in some capacity with the ride. Like I said, over here, this used to be the old Goofy's gas station. Now it is the Good Boy Mark, Good Boy Market. And this is where you're going to be able to pick up the perfect picnic basket. So over here for $26, pick your perfect picnic basket. So you get the picnic basket, you get to choose three snack items and either a Dasani water or a Minute Maid juice box. So here is the snacks that you get to choose from. They got things like the Go-Go Squeeze, carrots, cheese, yogurts, crackers, and then the juice in the water. And like I said, we were able to buy it online through the app when we ordered for Daisy's Cafe for $19.99. So in other words, $6 is what they're charging for the three snacks. Not a terrible price, but you also get the option to make it the picnic pack, then you get to add a blanket. And those are the sippers that you can get with the slushies. They got one of Donald diving down in the water and then one of Minnie. It's the fountain scene that they have, like the dirty dancing scene, it's pretty fun. So there is a incredibly long line here. We're talking a minimum of at least an hour. I'm going to go even closer to two just to pick up the specialty picnic basket. But we found a specialty hack. We're about to order food from Daisy's Cafe. And look, you have the option to just get the picnic basket for an extra $20. That's the way to do it. Okay, well, it's time for some lunch. So we picked it up at Cafe Daisy. It took a little bit of a while. You know, it got online. It still took about... 25 minutes after we were ready to get picked up on order so keep that in mind when you're ordering but let's start with some drinks here we first of all we picked up the picnic time watermelon lemonade minimate zero sugar lemonade with watermelon premium syrup and watermelon gummies there's the little gummies up top and the syrup at the bottom i heard that you pretty much have to mix it all up it looks good at first but yeah that is just a lemonade pretty much until you mix it then we end up also getting the specialty cold brew which is joffrey's coffee with a caramel must like cold brew sea salt caramel, toffee sauce, and topped with whipped cream. Ooh. I like it because it's not too, too sweet because of the zero sugar lemonade that's in there. Obviously, there's sugar added when they pump the watermelon syrup on there, but it's a very nice blend of not too sweet, not too dull. I like it a lot. A four and a half out of five. I really like it. 
Okay, this is the cold brew. It's definitely a, uh, a dark coffee. Got to mix it up there. You taste the caramel, the syrup on them, but this it needs to be mixed up better. If I got a coffee option, I'd rather get a black cafe at, at Galaxy's Edge or the Orchota, Orchata cold brew that's over at uh, Frontierland. The coffee drinkers will probably like this a lot more than I do, but I don't. Three and a half. So one of the entrees we ended up getting is pepperoni pizza flop over. I guess it's a it's pretty much a pepperoni pizza that they fold it in half and then they top with some mozzarella, provolone, and some garlic. So that looks pretty good. We also ended up getting Minnie's mini corn dogs, which you can also get with either cuties, uh, ma Mandarin cuties, applesauce, and a choice of small beverage. We ended up getting double applesauce with a bottle of water. The chips came with the hot dog, and the hot dog is the footlong dressed up daisy dog. As you can see here, footlong hot dog, special cheese sauce, mac and cheese, and potato crispies and chili cheese. Okay, first bite of the pepperoni pizza flop. It's pizza, and it definitely has a little bit of that uh, cafeteria pizza taste. I'm not the biggest fan of it. A little, a little of that fake pizza, you know what I mean? Take it out of the plastic, put it in an oven, boom, you got it. It's not worse, I've had better, I've had worse. It's theme park food. But realistically speaking, yeah. Three, three out of five. Little Minnie's corn dogs. Those are good. They got a little zest to them. I like it. Yeah, bad. Those are actually good for a little snack. You don't get a lot. You ended up only getting. Um, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight little guys. I mean, it's a kids meal, so they might be good for a snack or if you're an adult that doesn't eat that much. Four and a half out of five. They're good. And finally, the footlong hot dog with the chili cheese. It's a little messy. The chili. Not really a spice in there at all. Uh, kind of bland. The chips give it a nice little zest, a little crunchiness I like. The mac and cheese was kind of cold and not really flavorful. Hot dog had a good snap, a good bite. So the hot dog itself is good quality. Overall though, you know, maybe a four out of five. The donuts, they're just little mini, like with the type of donuts you can get like at a, a strip mall or um, the fair, like I get them at San Diego Fair all the time. It tastes exactly like that. The cinnamon, the sugar, they're good, don't get me wrong, but nothing special about them at all. So, hey, four out of five. Good snack, but eh. And while we're at it, let's try those chips that come with the with the hot dog. Those are good house-made chips. I like them a lot. Not too fried, really good crispiness. Mmm, the chips alone, four and a half out of five. Because we did the mobile order app, we ended up picking up the picking it baskets. It's pretty cute, look at it. So you're supposed to put your little snackies in there. So with the mobile order app through Daisy's Cafe, you don't get the option to uh, get the snacks, but it's still pretty cute. And look at this, you got a little, little ant right there enjoying a bit of the sandwich and one right there hiding. Ooh, there goes Clarabelle. She's got all the right moves. <laughs> I don't know about this guy. There's something goofy about him. Yeah, the, the guy over there, the guy behind you. Yeah, not, not you, of course. There's nothing wrong about you, Goofy. <laughs> Are you talking about the guy behind him? Yeah, yeah, that guy right there, yeah. Yeah, that him. <laughs> ah, there he is. Well, I guess it's time to go see the big cheese himself. Let's see what, uh, what they've done with the house. It's been a while since I've been in here. So it looks like... Oh yeah, everything's been nicely touched up and repainted. But it looks about the same. And all the things work, including the radio. I know it's, it's silly, but I've always been a big fan of this. The little Steamboat Willie in a, in a glass bottle. Because it's so cool, it just it animates like that. Yeah, it's so nice just to see everything retouched up. No sit marks, no scratch marks, no nothing. Like eventually this is all gonna get scuffed up and the paint's gonna go away from all the bodies sitting on it, but it's so nice to see it all nice and clean so far. Uh-oh. Who's stealing the carrots? Ready? Nobody's taking it. Oh, 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 hey, oh, there he is. Is that a Yes. One, one thing they're doing here at the little screening area right before you go into the hallway to meet Mickey, they're playing 
the new versions of the cartoons, the new Mickey series. Up and they used to play like the old, some clips in old classics, but now they're playing the new Mickey series. After all this time of closures, I figured I had to say hi to the big cheese himself, Mickey. Well, technically, Minnie's the big cheese, right? Yeah, because you know what it is. Happy Mouse, Happy House. Yeah, happy Mouse, Happy House. It's very it's all true. About Minnie. It's Sorry, all about Minnie. Minnie. But you, 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 you are the face of the franchise, so you know, we'll give you the credit for today. How about that? <laughs> but I love what you did with the place so far. Everything's nicely freshly painted and everything. I saw you help with the Goofy and Donald's house remodel it real nicely. We don't know so. about Donald's house. It's kind of like sinking from the inside out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, <Hello. laughs> you, you pay her to make the jokes like that? <laughs> I know, that's okay. So they got the cool little details. So you, you know, take a moment to really just stop and relax and look at these things. Look how cute. Ducks Crossing, you got Daisy with her nieces. I don't know the names of the nieces. Let me know if you know the names of the nieces in the comments below. Municipal Agency of Garbage Identification Collection with the brooms from Fantasia. Okay, that one is really cute. Get it? The conch is on your shoulder. That is cute. Well, let's go check out what we got with regards to merchandise and of course the craziness that is the exit and the gift shop all in one. Look at how fun that looks. Oh, I really do like the finished product of the store. It's really nice. There is a train that goes around. Until, oh, it's not working at the very moment. Look at that. It's paused. But it does go around the store so often. But let's check out some of the other merchandise they got. The ears that came out recently. These are pretty cool because it's got Pluto, Mickey and Minnie, and Little Chubby. Oh, and, and kind of like a picnic basket material on the side there. And this one's really cool. This is one of those soft uh, soft band ones. Chubby with the uh, sun and Mickey and Minnie. And of course, get yourself your own conductor's hat. Here are a few of the infamous candies. So these are so popular in the ride at the queue of Mickey and R Mickey's Railway that they had to make them themselves. So they got milk chocolate coins. Scrooge McDuck's milk chocolate coins. They got these golly pops which looks like they have some sayings on them. They got Garsh and Hot Dog and Oh Boy. And I believe these are $10 for three of them. $5.49 for the gold coins. And of course the power lines, but they are all sold out of those. And they would have been in this region as well too. So one thing I was noticing, we were looking, obviously they were already out of the power lines and they got the golly pops, but the chocolate coins from Scrooge McDuck, they're just regular coins. No Scrooge McDuck phase, Duckburg, nothing of that nature, nothing cool. They're like the chocolate coins you can get at a regular store or party city or anything like that. Yeah, you get this, but that's it. Come on, Disney. That's definitely a hidden Mickey right there. You can even take a look at just the cash register area right there. I'm sure there's a bunch of, oh, look, look, I can see a few things. So obviously you got some ink and paint. I like that one right there. It's supposed to be like Minnie's polka dotted dress. And you got the colors of Goofy and Pluto and Mickey and the whole gang. That is pretty nifty. So these are the model trains that you can get. Look how cool they are. So they go for 150. I've seen a lot of people walk out with these already. So you can be Goofy the conductor going on the engineer and then the ride vehicles. And it does already come with six figures. You can see Goofy, Minnie, Mickey, Daisy, Donald and Chuby. Or you can get yourself the Mickey's Roaster. That one goes for $49.99. Well, look at this. This is pretty cool. I know that they changed uh, Donald's boat to a little bit more with these little interactive games. So they have a little mini version of like the old school, those little water games. If you know, you know. This is what we used to have before Game Boys and even, uh, even cell phones. This is what you used to play with. Got this nifty shirt here. This one's going for $39.99. You got this little satchel bag of Chuby. This one's going for $34.99 for that little guy. They have a much larger and sturdier version of a picnic blanket. And that's probably the scene right there. And this one goes for $59.99 for our lounge fly friends. All the different scenes from the ride. And this one goes for $85. This is actually pretty cool. I like it. And look at this cool little hoodie sweatshirt. So it's got Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, them enjoying themselves in the roaster. But then look at the back. It has the end scene from the ride with Goofy popping out. That is nifty. 
And this one goes for $59.99 for this one. This mug is for $24.99. That's a pretty cool one. I like that. I have a feeling it'd be a little hard to kind of drink though. And this one you can buy the matching hoodie to your engineer's hat. And this one goes for $65. And look at just how cute this little baby onesies is. Oh, it'd be funny if it even said the end right there. <laughs> and then of course they have to have a press penny machine back here in the store. And they got all eight pennies here dedicated to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You can see everything from them riding in the Roadster, Donald, another cute Mickey and Minnie, Goofy, Chuby, Daisy, a picnic version, and of course Pete, the construction guy. Six and a half hours later. I wanted to at least go in one time and just check out how does Toontown look with the lights on now that the sun is set and just see all the lights of all the buildings and the lanterns and full glory and effect. And so far I am not disappointed. The El Capitoon shimmering with the lights right over there. Then you got all the street lights. There you go around the Centennial Fountain. Oh, and they actually did turn the fountain off. The lights coming off of the buildings, like the gag factory and the post office. Oh, Benny is all lit up now. There's the tree. The lanterns are really beautiful. Really a, a nice brightness right there with the pop of the color behind the. Went over to the center area. We got Good Boy Grocers Market. Oh, and the line is not too terrible now. They must have cut it off because uh, Toontown is closing in about half an hour. And they got some crisscross lights above the dining tables. City Hall, the courthouse, the bank. Look at the emerald colors, the blues and the greens in the hills behind it. I like that little touch of green of the neon right there at the Good Boy Grocers Market. Reminiscent of, uh, I just realized something. The color scheming is just like that of Pluto. I just realized that, look at this. So you got Pluto, obviously there's the sign right there. His golden body and in the green collar. And look at the color of the building, it's green and gold. I just noticed that. That's a cool detail. And then right over there, you got the Toontown Hill sign, very beautiful. Goofy's Playhouse, it's very pretty. Look at the lanterns, I, I told you, the colors that they put in this house, I just love it, the blues, the orange, the yellows. Ah, great details. It's a pretty place and look, they even put some lighting around in some of the plants, different colors of colors of lights. The energy, the lights. It's pretty. I like what they did here. Well, that is going to do it for this journey here at Disneyland California. More specifically, for the reopening weekend of Toontown. It was amazing. I feel like I got blasted back into the past and now I'm a kid again when this first opened 20 plus years ago. I'm excited to see all the additions, the renovations, the new things that they added here. And I'm excited to see what more is in store, including possibly some new characters down the road when uh, Donald Duck's uh, the water effects to start working and everything else. So I can't wait. If you as well are excited about this one, do me a huge favor. First of all, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give this video a big thumbs up for me if you liked it. And third, hit the notification bell. Have a lot more journeys headed your way. You don't want to miss a single one of them, including more content for Disneyland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Legoland, and so much more. And also make sure to follow me on social media at Big Red Journeys on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. So for me to you, thank you. And then I'll see you on the next journey. Bye-bye now.